All right, we're going to pick up where we left off last time. And if you remember last time, we had a little bit of a problem with the mouse over menus. And I don't know if any of you took a look at it, but I took a look at it. And really, wasn't so much what we did wrong. Um, notice how I said we because there was a problem with it, so I'm blaming you guys too. No, just kidding. Wasn't so much what I did wrong in it is that I didn't really dot the I's and cross the T's. So let's go pull that example back up. We can take a look at it and then we can move on. So for example, We look at what we did last time. You notice that. So we put our mouse over this guy, it works. When we take our mouse out, though, it still stays there. If we put our mouse over that guy, it uh, brings the up one, the one up underneath. And this one. If we go down, it doesn't work. All right. So there's a couple methods or a couple uh, events that I didn't uh, write code for that I need to do. Definitely on the right track, but a few things that we need to do. So let's go and edit this guy and kind of fill in the missing pieces. First thing, if you notice that we did is I moved, it, to, to sort of recap the problems that we were having, first of all we had the problem that there was a little gap between the two elements. That caused us when we moused out a one, we weren't able to get over the other one in time. So we cut down all the margins on that. We then, to further eliminate the issue, thank you, um, we put the on mouse over and on mouse out on the LI as opposed to the link itself. Because if you look here, there's still a teeny little gap by the LI, between the LI. You can see a little black sliver between where the link ends and the LI ends. So I moved the mouse over and mouse out to the LI. All right. But I only did that for one of the links. And I don't remember if I just, you know, lost my train of thought or what, but... That's why the NFL, et cetera, doesn't work. So I'm going to go and I'm going to move these other things for the other links to the LI as opposed to the link itself. So I'll take care of some of our problems.
want to do is we want to put the on mouse over and on mouse out the same code in the sections itself for the submenus because otherwise would have like we have with the NFL that appears but as soon as I take my mouse off it to go on there it disappears so I'm going to go and I'm going to copy and paste these events the same events on the section and I did that with MBA but I either neglected to or ran out of time or forgot to do it for the other sections. So let's go and do that. And let's make sure we change these appropriately. And now, barring any typos or anything like that, we should be in business. So now we put our mouse over that. We can. First thing we're going to do, we're going to look to see if we're getting any errors. And we are not. Second thing we're going to do is... We're going to start again what we had last Wednesday. I'll tell you what, I will, seems like sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, that's odd. It's almost like there's still a space. Yeah, and, and I thought I took care of that by moving these guys to the LI, by moving these to the LI, that didn't seem to take care of it. I don't know, I'll play with this and, and, and fix it, I don't want to belabor us watching you scratch my head. You kind of get the idea. The bigger lesson for, and you're welcome to take a look at this as well. All right. So 
I won't repost this one. You're welcome to take a look at the example from 128 and see if you can make it work. If you can, if you can take that and apply what you did to my example, that would be great because I want to see specifically what's wrong with that. All right. Um, all right. The idea here, though, is even though we didn't dot all the i's and cross the t's, is that we have an event, we point to something on the page, and we make a change based on that. We make a change to one of the properties of the page. Now. JavaScript is often used with forms, all right? It's used with forms for a couple reasons. First of all, remember that there's no validation. Uh, uh, prior to um, HTML5, there was no way through the HTML you could limit a text box to only be numbers, for example. But if you wanted something like age, age is only numbers. Now, in HTML5, there's a way that you can put in a type of the input to allow only numbers to be entered. All right? But until we can guarantee that everyone has an HTML5 com uh, compliant browser that supports that particular feature, we're going to need to do validation via JavaScript. All right? JavaScript allows us to validate certain things. So we're going to look now at validating a form and we're going to start out just to validate to see that people entered something in a text box. Okay. So let's go in create a form that will have a single text box normally with the form you have an action which is a script that gets called in our case we're not going to call a script we're simply going to go to the top of this page so I'll put a pound sign there and we have a method which is either get or post We will definitely revisit these one more when we get to server-side scripting. I'm going to put in a text box. going to change it. Instead of using a pound sign, I'm actually going to submit it to another page. Normally this would be a PHP or an ASP.NET or some sort of page, but I'm going to make it just a plain old HTML page because we're not really going to do any processing with the form data. We're just going to pretend like we don't. we've done some processing. And I'm just going to have this text. I'm just going to have text on this page saying,
data is processed. All right. Click on the form, we get our text box and our submit button. If I click the submit button, it calls, oh, form, I forgot to make that change to have it call process. Forgot to change the action. So if I type in something, It just goes to that other page that says data is processed. Now again, normally that would be a PHP script that would actually do something with that data. Notice the data gets passed on the query string. All right, so we can see it. Yes? Would the PHP go on this page or previous page? It could be done either way. Right. It, it is funny, but um, I, I've jokingly said anytime someone asks me a question, my answer is it depends. <laughs> because usually it does depend. You can, and you can, there's a lot of things you can do different ways. So you could put your PHP code in the form. You could have a separate page that contains a PHP uh, page. There's a lot of factors involved. All right. So that's the basic thing. And as you see, whether we put something in the form field or not, it goes to the next page. That's not good because let's say this was a piece of important data. Again, and I'm, I've, I've abstracted the uh, just one text box, but imagine this being part of a bigger form. And let's say this was an order form, and this was a credit card number or something like that. Well, you can't have an you can't have an order and not have not supply a credit card number or a method of payment, right? So that order is not going to work. Now. The question is, is where do we do our validation? Do we do our validation on the client side or the server side? Any thoughts on that? Client because it's faster. Client because it's faster. All right. In other words, I can put validation on there, and when I load, when the user loads the form, they'll also get the JavaScript to do the validation. So if they make a mistake in entering it in, like they forget to put their credit card number, or they, they put in uh, like letters instead of numbers or something like that, client-side validation will look at that and tell the user that they made a mistake without going back to the server. So because of that, they'll get immediate feedback about that. There's another reason why we would want to do our validation on the client side. Any idea what that other reason might be? Number one is it's quicker for the user, gets quicker feedback. Any other ideas what the other reason might be? Is it more secure? Is it more secure? Yes. Well, no. No. Um, if anything, Server validation would be more secure because that happens on the website server and the client can't really manipulate that. Well, the other benefit of this is from the perspective of the server. All right, let's look at it from the perspective of the server. Why is it a good idea to do client-side validation from the perspective of the server. Yes? Uses less resources. Uses less resources, right? In other words, if let's say I have a task, all right, and I say either you can do it or you can do it, what are you going to vote for? Him do it, <laughs> right? So therefore, if there's, a, if there's a task to be performed that the server doesn't have to perform, it benefits the server not to have to do it. So in this case, if you can imagine, again, an order without a credit card number, 
that order, there's no way that that order can process, right? It, it, it's invalid. Why bother the server and why take the entire trip through the internet and back to have the server look at it and say, hey, I can't process this. Therefore, boom, um, you know, you know, please re-enter it. It's much better if the client itself can look at it and say, and yeah, it's a little more work for the client, but the user gets a benefit of that, and that is that that is a quick response. All right. Now, when I when we said when we answered the question and said validation is to be done on the client side, that was only part of the answer. All right. What's the rest of the answer? Yes, client side validation is good. Are we still going to validate on the server side? Yes. Yes. All right. This is one of them. We're a belt and suspenders at the same time. All right. Why do we validate on the server side even though we have already validated on the client side? To make sure Number one, to make sure the client didn't do something to manipulate it. All right. For example, what's the easiest way the client could possibly circumvent validation on the client side. David? Uh, disable the turn off JavaScript. All right. With a browser, you can go in and turn off JavaScript. That means JavaScript won't run on your browser. So does that mean if I go and turn off my JavaScript, I can now go and place an order and not put a credit card? Eh, not so fast. All right, the server is going to duplicate that validation just to catch those outlying cases where possibly some manipulation was done on the client side to circumvent that. There's another reason we're going to do validation on the server side. Any idea? Think of what the server has and what the server can do compared to the client. Can the client look up stuff on a, on a database? No. Server, can it look up stuff on a database? Yeah. How might that come into play as far as validation goes? Uh, in the case of like ordering pizza, they would have to validate topping options. If you had like blank fields. Well, in this case, like an address within their area. Okay. That would, that would be good in the case of ordering a pizza. Um, you could probably validate topping options on the client side because that's very straightforward. There's a list of options and, and that's it. But to see do we deliver to this guy, what would that involve? Well, you'd look up the zip code and see and maybe do some calculation and see what the distance is between your pizza shop and the delivery zone. All right. What about with credit card numbers? What might you do with a database on the server that you could not do on the client? Check to make sure, that's Check to make sure it's a real credit card number. I was thinking validating emails as well, like it's an actual email address. Um, that's actually trickier than it sounds. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Usually what they do is they send you an email and ask you to confirm it. All right. Because it's not like there's a giant registry of email addresses that you can check up against. You can check to make sure that it fits the format of a valid email address, but there's really nothing you can do to make sure it's valid other than sending it an email and saying, click this to, to um, again, I suppose that's a form of server-side validation too. But as far as credit cards go, the client can do things like make sure the user enters something in, in a credit card. Make sure that the user enters in only numbers in a credit card number. Make sure the user enters in the right number of numbers. For example, credit card numbers are either like 15 or 16 digits long. I forget. So if someone entered in their credit card number as 5, well, you know that's not right. And the client can tell that without looking that up in the database. However, 
Things such as, is that really a credit card number? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, one, two, three, four. Is that really a credit card number? Is it a credit card that is expired? Is it a credit card that has been reported stolen? Is it a credit card that has not been validated yet? In other words, it's just been issued and the user hasn't like gone and dialed the number to activate it, I guess, instead of validate. Um, is it over its, its credit limit? All these things are things that require more extensive processing. A database has to be queried, all right, to look and look this stuff up. So, the server repeats a validation that the client does to make sure that the client didn't somehow manipulate it, most likely by turning off JavaScript. The server is also going to do more extensive validation that the client can't do, such as integrating with the database to, to look up details. That doesn't mean we don't do client-side validation. You might say, gee, if we have to do all that on the server, why bother with client-side validation? Well, again, because it's a win-win. With a little bit of effort, we can give the user very quick feedback saying, hey, you forgot to fill this in. And also, we can avoid sending something to the server that we know is simply ridiculous. All right? Questions? Hmm? Just to like confirm what you just said. So basically, the client will validate like if something's in a form or not, where the server validates stuff like credit card information to make sure it's actually legit. Yes. Okay. Um, what, the, the analogy I've given before is let's say you go somewhere and you uh, put in an application for, for a job, all right? You hand it to the receptionist. The receptionist might scan through it to make sure you've just filled in both sides of the page, all right? Make sure you've signed it, dated it, and you've answered all the questions, all right? They're not judging whether you're qualified for the job or not, because that's not their job to do. But they can look to make sure you, it looks like this person did really complete the form. It's then human resources job to look at your application and look at your experience and come up to the decision, yeah, this person looks qualified, I want to bring them in for an interview, or no, this person isn't. So it's like different levels of validation. And plus, the human resource person would look and remake sure that the, the receptionist didn't miss it, that maybe the application was submitted when the receptionist was at lunch and just went in the inbox or something goofy like that. So yes, the client-side validation is a very um, straightforward validation that doesn't require a lot of processing or processing is probably the best word. I was going to say thinking, but computer doesn't really, JavaScript doesn't really think, but it's a very straightforward, is this form, does this form look like it has been filled in correctly? Is the data reasonable? And then the server would go the, the extra mile and say, okay, yeah, this data looks reasonable, but is it really legit? All right, so I guess it's reasonable versus legit uh, is, is a good way to, to characterize it. All right, so I'm going to put code in to validate this form. And I'm going to put it on the on submit method. I could put it on the on click method of the of the submit button, but it's generally better here because there can be a couple different ways that you can submit a form without clicking a button. So anytime this form is submitted, I'm going to do this verification. Now, this is going to be a tough little piece of code to write. Let me try to. It's going to be tough because it's going to be awkward the way it's spaced out.
actually would not even bother write, writing this down because we're going to change it real quick because it's, if you haven't gotten the idea already, this is confusing as heck. I think that's right. Let's test it out. <laughs> or not. Well, it isn't right. Okay. submitting okay. that says hey we got a problem all right uh, let's see if document get element by ID txt name equals equals alert did not complete form that sure looks right to me but it clearly isn't all right clearly isn't. Part of the problem with this is that writing code like this gets to be very confusing to put it all in one giant line. All right? So, how do we fix that? We could It'll make it look nicer. That's true. <clears throat> One thing we can do is we can put this code in a function. All right. If this code looks this ugly and is this tough to debug with just this one form field, can you imagine what the validation would look like if you had a giant form with a bunch of fields in it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a function. And with a function, all I have to do is invoke, give the function name, and the processing happens, and I'm in business. So we put our function in the head. You create a function by putting in a script tag that tells the browser, hey, we're not in HTML land, we're in JavaScript land. Very similar to the way the style tag tells the browser we're not in HTML land, we're in CSS land. I give the function a name. Validate form seems like a reasonable thing.
did already. I don't think I put in a dot value. I just had a document get on my ID. Yeah. All right. Um, single quotes because the single quotes were inside the double quotes. Remember I had on submit and I had a pair of double quotes on the outside. So I would need to use single quotes within the double quotes otherwise it would get confused. submit. All right? Because if you put all your code on the on submit, it's smack dab in the middle of your HTML, it gets very confusing to read and so on and so forth. And it was difficult for me to tell where I made my error partly because of where the code was. It made it, the code harder to read. Harder to read means harder to understand, harder to make correct and so on. So instead what I did is I created a function a function is simply a name for a set of instructions. Okay. I put the function in the script tag. I call valid I call the function by giving the name of it. That will go in and it will start executing these statements in line. Yes. Yes, you can. We will have to do that eventually. Uh, you will. And, and the idea is like this. There's some pieces of JavaScript code that you're likely to want to reuse. All right? Let's say you write a real nice JavaScript function to do something that's common in within your application. There are also then JavaScript functions that are really specific to the page. In other words, the way this function is written, it's only going to work on a page as a text box called text name. All right? And therefore, I wouldn't be too worried about putting this in a file by itself because this page doesn't, uh, this uh, function doesn't lend itself to being shared across multiple pages. Now, a couple things I want to point out. Now that we got this to work, let's look at it more closely. First of all, notice the text box has both a name and an ID. All right? And I, I usually give them the same name and ID. All right? Why does it need a name and an ID? More or less, yes. It needs a name because that's what's going to be used to pass the data on to the server-side script. In other words, if I put this, let's call this, at, let's change the name to be text name SS. That's the name it gets passed on the query string to the second page. So the name is needed to pass to the server-side script. 
the ID is needed because that usually uh, is what's easier to write JavaScript with. All right. In other words, if I change this to SS or SS, my JavaScript still works because my validation is based on get element by ID. All right. I do not believe there's a get element by name method. ID is valuable for other reasons too, though, right? Because you write CSS code typically based on IDs. You can't write CSS code based on the name of things. I don't recall seeing there's a there's a get element by tag name, but and that that could return a list of things that have that. But I don't think there's a get element by name. So. Typically, to make my life easier, I call them both the same thing. <laughs> yes. Well, remember, a class is could potentially return multiple things. All right. And in this case, we want to focus on this specific text box. All right. So we would want to pinpoint and ask this particular text box. All right, so that's the first thing. Second thing, notice that I put it on the on submit. Again, that way if this is submitted in any manner, the code fires off. Notice I say return validate form. Functions can have two things associated with them. They can have arguments and they can have return values. It's possible to write a function that doesn't have either, all right? But functions can either have an argument or a and or a return value. Arguments are used are like the parameters that are going in. If I wrote a square root function, all right, that says give me the square root of a number. If I wrote a JavaScript square root function, what would the argument be to that? Well, the number that I wanted the square root of. All right. If I wrote a, <clears throat> if I wrote a, zip, you know, let's say I could write a zip code lookup to see if it is uh, how many miles uh, a place is from our pizza place. The argument might be the address or the zip code. The return value then is the answer of the function. So the return value would be the square root in the first example or the number of miles in the second example. This particular function has a return value, but not a, no parameters or arguments. I'm not giving anything to this. It's just looking at the form. And it's returning one of two things. It's returning a true or a false. A true means that it passed validation. A false means that it did not pass validation. All right? So. I return that, that function returns itself a, ret uh, a true or false. That value gets returned to the onSubmit event. And if I return a false, effectively that's saying, stop the presses, cancel this, don't send the data to the server. So when this returns a false, that's going to cancel the submission of this form. When it returns a true, it's going to let the form submit to the server. We'll spend more time reviewing this um, in subsequent weeks. It's, it's, it's a shame we've missed two classes already, one for the snow day and one at the beginning of the semester. Uh, but again, we'll cover this in, this will be our starting point um, next time. This is an if statement. I do want to kind of wrap up this whole function, even if we don't, even if we need to review it on, on Monday. This is an if statement which is a conditional statement, which means that sometimes we do one thing, sometimes we do something else. In this case, we are looking to see if the value of a text box is equal to nothing. Well, how do we find that text box? Well, we use our workhorse function, get element by ID. That function we use for a lot of things, to point to something specific on our page. So this says find the thing on the page has an ID of txt name. 
That's our little text box here. Specifically, we're interested in a value. Remember, this returns in object-oriented terms a text box object. A text box object has all sorts of characteristics about it. It has a class. It could have a class. It has a length. It has a position. It has a bunch of things about it. Are we interested in those? No. We're interested in the value of that text box. That is the characters that are contained within the text box. So this points to that text box. This part says, give me the value. Give me the characters that are entered in there. If that is equal to nothing, the two quotes side by side, then we do the stuff here. All right, then we do this block of statements. The alert is what pops up that message on the screen. Return false is what cancels the, the page submitting. If this is not true, we don't do this. And we simply return true and say, yep, this form's OK to go ahead and process. All right. One thing you might ask is why the double equal sign? In JavaScript, the equal sign is used for two different things. One of them is to assign a variable a value. The other thing is to compare two things. In other words, ask the question, are these two things equal? When you see the double, uh, double um, equal sign, that's asking the question, are these two things equal? So is the value that is contained in the text box with an ID of TXT name, is it equal to nothing at all? Did the user not put anything in there? If that is true, I'm going to do these things. I'm going to pop up the message, and I'm going to cancel the form submitting. All right. I will make an attempt to fix, I'll make take two, and again, that, that's really weird, and I'm wondering if there's a browser compatibility issue, because I know, I think I know, I, I say I know, but obviously I don't, that it worked on my machine, which again is like programmer's excuse number one, you know, works on my machine, right. Um, so I'll look at that example again, and you're welcome to look at it and try to get it to work. Next time we'll pick up on this where we're going to do more stuff with forms, both validation